we are delving into snow particles within After Effects. We're going to start off with the basics of setting up your snow particles, discussing how tweaking the physics can bring about different weather. Then I'm going to show you a couple of quick examples of this, showing you the properties behind various weather setups I've created, and I'll share a must-know workflow tip that will quickly enhance your snow scenes. All right, I am inside After Effects. I've got my composition here ready to go. And the first thing I'm gonna do is add a new solid and I'm gonna name this Snow Particle. Then I'm gonna come over to Effects and Presets and type in CC Particle World. I'm just gonna grab this and drop it onto my solid layer. All right, the first thing I wanna do is just make this look like snow. So to do this, I'm gonna come over to this Particle tab, drop down and I'm gonna to go to Particle Type and change this to Faded Sphere. Then I'm just gonna come down to Color Map and change the color to white. And I'll do the same for death color as well. In this case I'm going to change the birth size and death size to about 0.1. All right when I play through I can see that what I've got looks like a snowflake but it really isn't acting like one. Everything is coming out of the central point in the middle of the screen. So to remedy this we are going to come over to the producer tab. I want it to look like it's falling from the top of my screen just out of sight so I'm going to change the radius x y and z. Then jump up to birth rate and change this to 50. You can adjust this later of course but I just want it to look like there's a lot of snow falling. Then grab your snow particle layer, drag it to the left. We are doing this to make sure there is no slow ramping of the particle effects. This way the snow is just going to be falling fast from the get-go. All right, close that particle tab. We are going to drop into the physics tab now. You'll notice that the snow is falling straight down. I want it to give it a little bit of fluttering movement. So I'm going to choose twirl. This effect causes the particles to rotate around a central point. This will create a kind of spiral effect. So velocity is used to control the speed of the particles within the system. And since twirl goes around, it is controlling the speed of that motion. Now, I didn't actually love this effect, so I'm turning it to zero in this case. However, it is usable for a wind effect, and I'm going to touch on that again in just a moment. I always choose between 0.3 and 0.5 for my gravity, and we are going to use resistance to control the speed of our snowflake. Extra did nothing that I loved, so I ignored it altogether, and I am going to use extra angle to introduce a chaotic windy vibe. Now, if you were paying close attention to that preview just then, you would have seen absolutely no difference with the extra angle. This surprised me when I was making this tutorial because I realized it was actually because the tutorial was working with a faded sphere. Here is another example with a snowflake that I made within After Effects. So this is great, there is a lot of difference in this version and if you are working with the faded sphere my recommendation would be to use velocity to introduce some of that chaotic movement that you want. The last properties we are going to look at are the direction axes and the gravity vector. Now we can use these to change the wind direction of our particles. For example I'm going to change the gravity x and y to 0.8 and there you can see the direction has changed. So you have seen everything within Particle World that you need to go out and create your own snowflake scene. <laughs> But there is still one more thing that you need to do. Here is a before and after of my own snow particle setup. Now the one on the left is not inherently bad but I was going for realistic and I had definitely not captured that look there. But doing this one thing I was able to capture the realism that I was going for very quickly. But first here are a few project examples of mine showing you how a few tweaks to the properties can drastically change the look of your snow scene. Feel free to pause if you want to recreate or if you want to have a proper closer look you can actually find this project file for free in the description down below. Also as I mentioned mentioned earlier I did add my own particle in some of these examples and I just wanted to show you how you can do the same. Under particle type you can choose textured quad polygon and under texture layer you just want to link to the composition that you made that contains your snowflake. You could even do like a PNG or something that you've downloaded off the internet. If you want to know exactly how I made these ones I will link to that tutorial at the end. Now onto this one essential tip that you need to do. Use references. You will be really surprised the things you will notice in your references that you just didn't think of before you watch them. Yes, looking at actual snowfall, either real life or in videos, will help you to capture the speed and randomness that you need for your animation. So absolutely immerse yourself in some snowfall videos for that added touch of beauty in your next project. 